Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wild Chats, your place for everything animals. I am Ryan. That is Maria. <laughs> Welcome in again, everybody. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Um, Maria, have you ever been uh, out and about and uh, been taken out by an animal? Has an animal they ever like out. knocked you to the ground? A lion came and ate me. Scaled you like a like a a wall. I mean, and like, then got a scar from it. From my what, what did that come counter. from? What did you do? That was an oven attack. Okay. <laughs> I was just using the small oven, and I didn't count on the lid. So when I went to reach for the stub, extra crispy. I I did exactly the same thing. And now it's it's scarred. I can't even get rid of it. My my new uh, air fryer slash toaster oven. Yep, right arm. Look at us. It's like we got matching tattoos just for the show. Maria <laughs> and I got matching burn scars now for the. <laughs> for and they're about the same healing. Like they're a similar healing. Mine is nasty. Oh no, mine was really bad too. So as time <laughs> goes on, we'll just end up with a W. We got one in one direction, and then just there'll be a W by the time we're done. <laughs> we should we should keep showing people like. Right, my, right. My jaguar scar. This is my jaguar scar when I got taken down by an animal. Gotcha. gotcha. So it was way more fun that oh, I was being silly and I didn't measure the lid of the oven. Yeah, I've got my toaster ovens up where like my microwave should be. So like I, I'm tall, so I can reach over. But then yeah, you kind of forget the angle that you're at, and I just yeah, totally fried myself. But okay, um, going back to the question, if I got the, taken. The, the question is, have you ever been taken out or like you know trampled or anything by by an animal? Yes, I have. When I was a kid, uh, there was a turkey. That a turkey. Jumped, yeah, he jumped from the from a tree and literally like it was just gonna go eat me alive. And uh, I got a I got a scratch, but it wasn't really horrible. I also got bitten by a monkey, so I've been okay. taken out by animals. No, tur <laughs> turkeys are mean little buggers. Like Benjamin <laughs> Franklin actually wanted the turkey to be like the the uh, America's national animal instead of the bald eagle. And I think everybody, once they kind of figured out the temperament of the turkey, they're like, no, no, that is not going to be the symbol of our country. No, they are mean, they're territorial, they're amazing animals, they're smart. I find them to be very interested, very interesting animals. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, sometimes you're out and about and you're having a good time and just enjoying yourself. Maybe it's a day at the beach, out on the water. And uh, animals just like to remind you that you're kind of just treading on their territory. They yeah. were they were there first, and you're you're just visiting. And uh, their home. Exactly, exactly. And uh, oh, look how cute they are. So sometimes uh, I love dolphins. To me, they are just so majestic. This guy and loved dolphins until right about now. <laughs> that guy. Yeah, he literally measured the jump to hit He did. It. The dolphin turned sideways. Look at him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then he, he kicks his head into him to get some extra leverage. Like, dude, get off my wave, man. <laughs> no, he the thing is, people think all oh, dolphins are sweet and kind. They are sweet and kind, but they're also very smart. And the lower they are in the food chain, according to research, the lower they are in the food chain, the more aggressive they may be towards other species. Because oh, really? they they have a very strong social structure. So if they're the lower at the totem pole, um, they usually get picked on or bullied by the other dolphins. Oh, you're so saying they're okay, within a dolphin. Oh. So within a dolphin pod, if you're kind of the low rung animal, you're more aggressive. So it's well, kind of like you're a more aggressive to people to other animals you may perceive as submissive, that you can take advantage of it. Gotcha. Okay, so it's not quite Napoleon complex. It's more of a I get bullied all the time. There's finally somebody else I can pick on. That's basically it. Okay, so we're we're thinking that that dolphin was probably the lowest rung social person. No, I in think that, that one was just a bully. Gotcha. I think he was okay. like, "Ooh, I see you. You are in my lane. I'm gonna take you out." Gotcha. That's the way I, I see it. But again, and he I'm did not... too. Like they're all <laughs> surfing. <laughs> So I used to boogie board a bit. I surfed a little bit, but I definitely did more boogie boarding. And surfers and boogie boarders in California are are separated. Like they just they don't hang out. They don't usually there's like a pier in the middle and like one's on one side and one's on the other. Um, surfers are not big fans of boogie boarders in general. Um, 
they uh, on occasion will do what they call skagging where they literally try to like slice you with the uh the fin of their board just to let oh. you know they don't, they don't want you there um so they usually kind of stay pretty separate it's a friendly it's reminder yes yes if you're a boogie boarder and just kind of getting into the sports go to the other side of the pier from the surfers or the other set of usually there's a break and then you get a little channel where there's the the different sets of breaks are which you can paddle out in um but go to the other side of, of that break that way you're not by the surfers but surfers by nature are yes, also it. territorial there's a lot of etiquette as far as like not dropping in on somebody catching waves and then as things get more and more crowded it gets really hard to follow that etiquette. Um, and it just kind of looked like this dolphin was like, all right, we're all in our lanes. Yes. Uh, dude, dude, this is bad surf etiquette. You're not supposed to be paddling to go over the wave while we're, we're coming into it to, to drop in. So uh, he just decided he was going to take it. Well, and the same thing happens with many other sports, even if you go cross country and not cross country skiing. Okay, come on. That's a hard thing to score. Those guys are vicious. The speed, the speed man, the speed. When you're, the, when you're downhill skiing, you have to be so careful because of the same thing. And the most dangerous people are the people who are just learning and they're in the yeah. middle of their way because they have no clue what they're doing. And instead of staying still, they keep cutting, a, they keep, you know, cutting across to slow down. And they're so dangerous. Not that I'm an expert, but I did get a, a black eye out of a skiing accident. So that was fun. So I can say that a mountain also took me. Gotcha. A mountain took you out, uh, a, a turkey. Uh, <laughs> oh, my I gosh. Say, I've been bitten by slugs. I know. I thought you were about to say slug. I was like, are you serious? You're not serious right now. <laughs> I got bitten by a slug. and <laughs> a, slug, a worm? Worms are dangerous. <laughs> oh, man. Now, this wrap around your little finger, cut off the circulation. Bye-bye to the tip of that one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. God, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Especially the pinky. That's the most dangerous one. Oh, man. <laughs> I was reading a fact the other day just because we were talking about fingers and stuff. And I thought it was interesting. They say when you snap your fingers, the sound isn't actually from, from your fingers. It's from when your middle finger actually hits the fat below your, your thumb. That's the yeah, actual that. sound that you're hearing. Mm. I always assumed it was from the two fingers that. Well, not because if you do it like this, it wouldn't work. But if you yeah. do it like. But the sound then... is actually when it hits the fat of your hand. Didn't know that till the other day. Oh, so that's a very important information that you should well... know if you want to live in a happy, harmonious <laughs> society. Hey, some people can't snap. Some people can't whistle. Maybe this helps a non-snapper really work on his skills and he's able to use them going forward. So you so can go he... snap around when you, you're walking like, I know it's the fat that I'm hitting. No, you're like trying to tell your dog not to do something or to like come here and you got it, you know, I don't know, could be useful, could be useful. Okay. <laughs> but uh, so so speaking of, of woofers, sometimes uh, you're, you're out and about and uh, when you're walking them, they kind of want to do what they want to do. Oh gosh, yes. And sometimes they can get in your way and sometimes they can drag you into a pond. Oh my god, <laughs> oh. <laughs> She looks she looks distraught. She looks like she just they went look, through. Yeah, you know, I mean at least she's smiling. Like she's gonna have the soggy wet shoe, which everybody loves, a, a good soggy wet shoe. That's adorable <laughs> though. But some dogs, yeah, are just bird dogs. And this one is clearly a bird dog in a wet slope. <laughs> I just like how she just lands on her piney and just, just goes. <laughs> and then she's like, oh, it's, that's a beautiful, that's a, that was a, is that a doorman or a? Uh, I think so. It had writer. the big pointy ears. That's, that's what I was assuming it was. Let's see. Yeah, that shot looks like a heavy doberman but then when the dog turns around it almost looks like uh rottweiler but rottweilers have similar colors but yeah, yeah that's, a, that's don't a have very... those pointy ears do they yep yeah that's a, no that's a chunky that's a chunky uh, <laughs> that's doberman. a papita shaped rottweiler <laughs> yeah that's a, a, a rottweiler shaped um <laughs> doberman they're they're very sweet dobermans in my opinion of course I, I mean, most dogs, I, if you train dogs properly and you take the time and you know what you're doing, I, I've always kind of held to the belief that when I get a new dog, I like to do it at a point in my life when I know I've got like a month or two where I'm working from home or I'm not working. Because if you put the time in at the beginning, 
the rest of your life with that animal is just going to be so much better and more fulfilling so much better. than just, and, and certain breeds are harder to train than other breeds, but you have to take the time and you, the old, uh, what your parents tell you, you get into it, with, you get out of it, what you put into it. That's basically. true. Yeah. But speaking of, of Dobermans, when I was a kid, my uncle had one and uh, he was a really sweet dog. Like I could stick my, my hand into his mouth. I was, mm-hmm. well, I was always very animal oriented and I would always hug the dogs that I wasn't supposed to. And I, the only dog that ever bit me was some neighbor's chihuahua uh-huh. when I was a kid. Nothing else. Like I will get into somebody's cages, no problem. But my uncle had this uh, Doberman and he will not fight with any human until we took him to the park and started fighting with another dog. Mm-hmm. And I I was a kid. I didn't know how to stop a fight. And that was just so dangerous. Yeah. You have to be careful with children walking a dog because you just don't know um, if that dog is not fully trained. Speaking of training, they're not fully trained. Then you don't know how they're going to react to other dogs. You don't know if you haven't exposed them to things. So you cannot help shape their behavior in a way where they can live, you know, happier. Yeah, I mean, it's always adorable to see a kid walking a dog, but then you just, yeah, you know the dog can pull the kid wherever, but but I guess sometimes it doesn't matter how, how big you are, how much you weigh, or how big your dog is, because because uh, oh, yeah. you need have to tell- have some adventures sometimes. I tell you, I mean, she is the size of, um, you know, an oversized rat, so we'll call it the size of a uh, <laughs> New York rat, and, uh, and nice and chunky. But the way she angles, she really can pull you. I mean, she's like doing Aikido, like on me. Like I have to be so aware <laughs> of my center because she will pull me in such a way that I will lose balance. And I'm thinking, how can a dog that weighs less than 10 pounds can really get a, an adult woman to lose balance? And I think that's the beauty because I've learned a lot from her, mm-hmm. from her, the way she pulls me about balancing and maybe even be better at Aikido that I haven't done in 20 years, but I don't know, like, oh my gosh, if my dog can do it, so can I. <laughs> That's more leverage though. Aikido is like redirecting force. Pepita just kind of waits till you've got your feet close together and then takes off so she can. Well, <laughs> she redirects force. <laughs> I mean, I'm like doing this and my hair is flying and I'm like, whoa. <laughs> But see, if, if you, you knew if you ever really needed her, she would be there to protect you, right? She, she, She'd guard dog you if, if you really needed it, huh? Yeah, she has. She really has. I mean, especially when the bicycles are coming around and she just feels like she needs to guard me from the bicycles. And I mean, it's just, yeah, very good. So, so some dogs will drag their owners into the water. Other dogs, apparently uh, puppies and such, maybe, I, I don't know if this guy maybe didn't get the treat that he felt he was deserved. Pepita's very big on her payments. Um, and she's got her way of taking little uh, spots of revenge when she doesn't get treats that she wants or she get what she thinks she deserves. There's yeah, a the, chance was, the bank account was too depleted. There's a chance that maybe that's what happened here. And uh, this, this dog just really wanted to kind of show his disapproval of something that had happened before this clip happened. Let's take a look. <laughs> Gosh, that poor guy. Like, I'm going to drown here. <laughs> like, the guy is actually protecting his neck. Oh, no. And if he allows the dog, he will literally drown him. <laughs> it's like awesome. reverse CPR. He's like, no, I got this. It's CPR. I saw this police dog do it once. I got it. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think actually what is happening is the dog is trying to get the owner out of the water is the do way too. of doing it not I necessarily do. the most efficient way of doing it but it definitely is the way of doing it so who I knows I, I think he was trying to protect him in his own way but yeah I, I, they clearly don't understand our, our anatomy <laughs> dogs are just hilarious the way they do things and and the way they try to help sometimes is so cumbersome because you think they're helping you but they're actually attacking or drowning you well there's <laughs> They think they're, I think, as with most things, it's intention that's the important part. Unless they sure. actually drown you, then I guess intention doesn't matter. But. I mean, it's like when a dog wants to be next to you, like, oh, here, I want to be next to you and guard you. 
and you trip and fall. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. there's, I love when you go to like other people's houses that have like tiny dogs and they're like, no, no, just keep walking. They'll get out of your way. It's fine. They'll get out of your way. And it's like, well. And then all of a sudden, okay. beep. Well, it's like you've got history with them or the person that they're talking to maybe isn't, is, is more mobility challenged or they're older or something. And it's like, okay, that sounds great in theory, but once that theory falls apart, like. <laughs> I not really only that, but it does happen more often than not because as an owner, you don't realize that you you like learn a dance with your animal. So you yeah. already know to be aware of the speed in which they're going to move because you have tested that theory for so long. You pretty much can predict how fast you can walk without hitting them. And you can't expect somebody else to do it without hurting themselves oh. or the dog. Well, it's just like any relationship too. I think you build up a rhythm that maybe you don't even understand consciously it's just subconsciously you know that when your dog gets out of your way he always goes to your right so maybe you lean to the left when you're about to walk past him because you know which way he's gonna go or there's just so many little things yes that... there have been so many instances instances when i felt like i was gonna trip and fall because she chose the opposite direction to where she often goes just like uh -huh. you said i thought they always go towards the right or the left this one no, she does what she wants. Honestly, well, God bless her it, heart is all I can say. <laughs> her her cute, fluttery, murmury heart. God bless it. <laughs> <laughs> Oversized, cute, oh fluttery <laughs> heart. <laughs> I, I was reading somewhere that said that chihuahuas are actually the ultimate survivor, even more than a cockroach, because they have heart issues, dental issues, eye issues, size issues, and they survive it. Like they can live a long time with any of these issues and they're comparing them to like a cockroach. So now every once yeah. in a while, I'm like, oh my cute little cockroach. <laughs> I saw a photo of like one of the, I think it's the oldest dog or whatever it was, but it was the dog's 21st birthday and it was a chihuahua. And I feel like every time I see a dog where it's like a special like longevity, like record or something it's usually a chihuahua i don't know what it is about those little ones but man they do <laughs> they do last they're so feisty it's like they will just survive just to spite death like they're just like <laughs> they're just, yes it's hilarious because there have been so many times where pepita is like oh she's a goner to the point and this sounds awful and i mean it with the most love but you're like oh are you still breathing? Like I seriously walk to her. I'm like, are you still breathing? Because she has a heart murmur that is so loud mm -hmm. that you can hear it. Mm -hmm. Or she breathes there in a way that you can hear her snoring. And if I don't hear her, either her breathing or her heart murmur, I'm like, is this your, what? And now she just <laughs> moves. I'm like, oh, phew. Okay. Well, that's the funny thing too with animals. Cause they always like small animals. They do. They usually end up with with joint problems and they have heart problems just because they were they weren't that small and they got bred that small and then it ends up causing problems but and they haven't quite figured out why but they've done studies and there's definitely a correlation between dog size and their longevity yes. and most big dogs don't live anywhere near as long like it's almost twice like some of your big like saint bernards and stuff they only live by seven and eight years is their average lifespan and I, and I because I'm a big fan of Westies and, and those and Havanese and, and dogs like really? that. Really? Do tell! And they're, I'm sorry, I'm laughing at him because he talked about his Westies often. I'm, so just so everybody knows, I I had to make that choice that, that some of us have to make sometimes and I wanted to go travel the world and I had my dogs and as much as I love my dogs, I didn't want to not live that part of my life for eight years or because Westies live a really long time. Um, and I loved having them and my ex-girlfriend who they basically grew up with was willing to take them. Um, so I traveled for a couple of years and then it got to the point where unfortunately when I would come visit, they would be so depressed after that she finally said, hey, it's just, it's not fair to them. And as I didn't want to be selfish in the fact of I want to see them, but it's just hard because I don't want to put them through that. I don't, that's, that's just not fair of me. 
So the time I got to see them got a little more and more distant. And unfortunately, I didn't find out immediately. But sometimes when you pick a dog, <clears throat> like you go to the shelter or something, you end up, you just connect with mm -hmm. dogs somehow for some reason. Um, and Sasha was like that. I, I went in and just, I don't know what it was. She was antisocial with everybody else, but there was a bond between us. And she passed away about a year ago. And I didn't find out right away. It was during COVID and everybody just had their own lives and their own stuff going on and communication wise and stuff. So I think that it's still fresh in my mind. And so sometimes it's, it's easier for me to revisit some of these memories when we're having fun and we're joking on a podcast. So, and then we talk about Pepita and Sasha was such a part of my life connected in that way. And then Pepita kind of filled that space. But when I think of Pepita and the time that we spent together and filling that space, it just inevitably brings me back to Sasha. So it's, it's hard for me because I don't want to mention it because they're, she's not still here, but I feel like we're doing an animal podcast and we're talking about our pets. So I keep revisiting it. And then I also feel bad, be, not bad, but we got, I don't know if you've ever watched, do you watch the show Darman Greg ever? Maria? Yes, I did. That was a that was in the in nineties, right? It was it was a while ago. But did you see where basically she got she got a second dog, but she didn't get it? And I know a lot of people do this. I have friends that have done this. But she didn't get the dog for herself. She got the second dog so her dog would have a pet. Aww. Basically. And that's what that was the premise of the show. I think it was Nunzio was the second one on the show, but so we kind of basically did the same thing where at about three years, and man, that was a mistake. No, oh, There's no. certain dogs, guys, that are meant to be only dogs. And guys, please share your share your stories in, in the comments down below um, because I've had experiences where I got a second dog and it worked out great. And I had experiences where I had a second dog and the first dog's personality totally changed and roles shifted and everything kind of the whole dynamic in the household mm. just changed. Like I don't see Pepita taking to a second dog very well. Even she was she's actually not really good. good. She was very good. She, her best friend was a cat. Okay. But that's kind of the same personality type as Pepita. <laughs> <laughs> if it was like, a, so Bentley was very, is very loving. And fortunately Bentley is still with us. He is, 16 or 17 years old right now mm -hmm. I, wow he's getting about up 17 years. also because we're talking about how long these small dogs live and westies are, are a lot like chihuahuas they live a really long time yes um, they do they really do and they're yeah they're they're but it's just they weren't some dogs were were small and that was their purpose like a lot of burrowing dogs like westies are, are for gophers and stuff like that but then you get you know herding dogs and stuff that are your bigger breeds but sometimes if you don't have a herding dog and you just try to do it by yourself <laughs> sometimes the animals take advantage of this situation i don't even know what you're gonna show and i'm already laughing <laughs> like, I'm like, what do we have a squirrel what's going and on so you have those days where it's just not your day <laughs> <laughs> And then he hits her oh, again and again. Oh my gosh. <laughs> There's That's the hurting dog. See, when the dog's slacking behind. Oh. Yeah, but what is that guy wearing? I don't know. I'm assuming it's some kind of like traditional outfit. I never watched this clip all the way through, so I didn't actually see the goat <laughs> come all the way, the sheep come all the way back and really go for it. I don't know, but the heat. Wow, it's like he literally got taken by one in particular. Yeah, no, he's he's angry. Like he and then he comes back. So you got the herding dog who should be yeah, over the there herding protecting. dog is standing in a co oh, oh that was me. That last one was was savage. That is the part I did not see before. That's the first time I see that. <laughs> that was savage. Look at the guys like there suffering and yeah. Oh, I always like because it's so costume. Like, it, there's no way this is from a movie or anything, right? 
I don't think so, but the guy no. is definitely wearing something and he's not sitting well with these sheep because that guy is like mad. I and always then, assumed this was the herder though. Like, it could it be there. Like, I don't know. Doesn't this look like it's like the person herding or maybe whoever has the camera is the herder? That's I, an I interesting think that angle. Got, I'm, I'm going to go with a theory. Okay. I'm going to go where this is, of course, me just let's go crazy with it. But it looked like he was just being there because the okay. sheep will never respond to a shepherd like that. If the shepherd was kind and the dog didn't bind, he didn't protect the guy, which means that's, that's not his that's dog. That's what threw me off. A shepherd's herding dog would usually be by the owner. And it, yeah. Okay. That's a good point. I didn't think about it. And that. if there is trouble, the dog will have taken care of it immediately to protect the shepherd. But also the face of the guy was weird. Like there was something I didn't yeah. like, that to me was... it looked like a joke that just went wrong because Yeah, because yeah, I was like, that's why I was thinking, you know, it's... Pro- your neurons are not connecting properly, sir or ma'am. Mm-hmm. But yeah. that's why I thought I'm like, maybe it's a movie scene or something. It's I think the funny thing about all the clips when we're watching that we always forget someone has to be filming this. Yes. So, it might have actually been the shepherd that was filming it. And then they just came across this person. And, and clearly, as much as you had a problem with this person's outfit, that that sheep uh, clearly also was playing fashion police. <laughs> you they raised Mac him, like went back. I mean, that was like vindictive. I wonder oh, yeah. if they did something to install in that sheep such aggression because they're usually, I mean, they can be territorial and they're guarding each other, especially if she's a female, has a, a baby. But I didn't even see a, a uh, little baby one around. Mm-hmm. My so idea, I don't know. I may be completely wrong. And that's one of the things I would like people to to tell us because maybe sheep herders um, from the movie, just go with it. Sheep herders uh, may know what to do. <laughs> I yeah, hope you watch the movie. <laughs> that no, I, I would love for people to, if you guys think that clip is real or fake or what's going on there or movie scene, maybe somebody knows the background of it. I just find stuff that makes me laugh, guys. And then we we share it here on the show <laughs> and we chat about it. It's not, uh, but and animals, then we just go with it. Animals can be a bit vengeful. So I guess in in 2015 in China, there was a guy who there was a dog laying in his parking space as he was coming home from work after a oh, long day God. I and he was tired. So he got out of his car and literally kicked this dog to get it to move out of his parking spot. Mm-hmm. So the dog moves out of the parking spot and the guy pulls his car into his spot and walks into the house. Well, what he didn't realize was the dog was part of a pack of dogs and the, the pack of dogs did not take very kindly to them to him treating, you know, one of their pack members like that. So they literally vandalized his car, like bit it, <laughs> scratched it, bit up the windshield wipers. Um, and he, let's see, he woke the next morning and his car was full of dents. He only realized what happened when a neighbor who saw the dogs attacking the car told him. About Nobody it. stopped the dogs either. I mean, that's the problem with pack animals too. They're dangerous. Mm-hmm. And, and some of them can- dangerous. And some of them can have long memories because they're yes, they now, do. I don't have the background on this one, but but in the same vein, apparently there was a girl that worked, um, let's see, where was it? Ah, New England Aquarium in Boston. And oh. nobody really knows why, but and it was a volunteer. It wasn't like a uh-huh. normal employee. But apparently, whoever this person was, the octopus's name was Truman. And this volunteer apparently offended Truman at some point. I don't. I don't know how. Maybe what you call have it to do, What do you have to do to offend an octopus, guys? Here, that there's a fun question, Maria. What would? What could you do if he, an octopus is in the water and you're a volunteer, so you're clearly not swimming in the tank. You're not feeding it. Like you're, you're kind of just guiding guests and stuff around. Hold on, I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna guess. But no, I don't have an answer. So this is no, a hypothetical. I will, I will guess. Okay. I'm gonna venture a guess. Um, many volunteers do interact with the animals. Okay. And they, uh, octopus are extremely smart animals. So it could be anything from um, the way she will talk to the octopus, the way she will interact with them, not perhaps touch them, but the way she will give them treats. 
Okay. Because she was allowed to feed them. Um, could have been unfair in his perception if there was another octopus nearby. Although octopus are really hard to keep because they're so smart and they can cause havoc if they want to leave, if they want to escape. They'll find a way. It's just not oh, yeah. finding Nemo only. I mean, these octopi, octopus are extremely smart animals and they're they're able to clog tubes and, and literally just escape. And uh, it could have been anywhere from the way she will interact with him or clean the cage. And maybe one day she moved him rudely and the octopus didn't take it properly. I mean, okay. it could be anywhere from cleaning the, not the cage, I'm sorry, cleaning the aquarium, the way she was cleaning the glass, the way she removed food. Who knows? But they're very smart and they will remember. Yeah. All right, so let's see. I'm an I'm an adventurer guest then too. I I have this picture in my mind. Ryan, if you knew what will happen, what will it be? I I have a feeling that she got in charge of of uh of hauling the kids around and and showing them the animals and walking them around and doing the tours, and they would get to the octopus cage, okay. and she would then every single time that she brought the kids would start a cavalcade of kids tapping on the glass. Interesting. I like and the then angle. the kids would get into it and they'd bug the octopus instead of bugging her. And then she would just sit back and get a little bit of break while she she had a little snack and, and just reveled in the, <laughs> the moment I like of, of you, silence. I like you were rational her. about this situation. Yeah, yeah. She's going to take a little <laughs> mini break, enjoy the, the silence for her, probably pop in, you know, some some earbuds and uh, just listen um, to some music. Watch a reason to the podcast, you know. Yeah, listen. Exactly, exactly. And... Uh, <laughs> And because this happened a while ago, clearly Wild Chats wasn't out. So she wasn't listening to us, or she would have been. Um, <laughs> and the octopus <laughs> was smart enough to realize what this girl would do every time they would come by. But what the octopus did, now this is back to the actual real story, not just <laughs> Ryan's version of events. <laughs> I, I like your version of events way more than mine. Mine is too scientific and too boring. Yours was like, Ooh, tell me more. Was it really bad podcast that the octopus didn't like the sound? <laughs> Maybe she listened to heavy metal. Who knows? I don't know. Um, or maybe the, the octopus wasn't naturally from, from Boston and, and the octopus just couldn't deal with her accent when she was trying to talk to her. I don't know. I'm just kidding. Anybody from Boston? I'm kidding. You like the way pronounced Boston? I, I'm sorry. I enjoy I her accent. I'm just joking. I just... <laughs> I say Boston, which is rude, I know. It's Boston. <laughs> okay. Um, but basically what the octopus would do, again, I don't know what the enclosure situation and everything looks like, but he would squirt her with water. Like octopus can do little jets. We talked about this in a previous video where uh, the octopus that actually would fly and they would use. So yeah. I, I, I didn't know this. Like octopus apparently can jump out of the water and they flap their, their little wings on it's the side of their head. It'll be the squid. Uh, oh, that's a squid. Okay. Okay. I apologize. And, uh, but they can propel water also, but this octopus would basically squirt her with water every time he saw her. Nobody really knew why or what she did, but then she, he didn't do it to anybody else. And then she left to go to college and came back to visit one day. And the octopus had not squirted anybody with water in the entire time she was gone. And immediately, as soon as he saw her, squirts her with water. Maybe he liked her. Maybe actually is opposite. I maybe thought that too. I'm like, maybe it wasn't a mean thing. No, maybe it's just calling the attention like, hey, come here. But they, they did do a research. They did do a research about the, the uh, intelligence of octopus. And mm -hmm. they actually found that they will even change colors if they like somebody. Okay. Like they will literally blush if they saw someone they like. Mm -hmm. Isn't that adorable? Yeah. We have an episode coming up called Bedtime. It's all about sleeping animals. I will share some more fun uh, octopus sleeping facts with you then. I'm not going to waste them here. Um, <laughs> but yes, they are really smart and interesting creatures. And because of their body is, is gelatinous as they are, not gelatinous, of course, but just I in having no bones, like you said, they've they've shut down nuclear reactors by be, getting like caught up in, um, I know we've got, what was that video you had did, done a long time ago that involved stuff like that? Um, I think it was animals escaping, but I think, I don't know if you only got done in Spanish, but I, I think it was a video about animals escaping. On humans also. I know you had done a video about that that I thought was really interesting, but. 
Yeah, it was it was exactly about an octopus who who fleed an aquarium and it actually clogged everything. What clogged the nuclear plant was the medusas. Oh, the medusas okay. Clogged and it, I mean, it could be, you know, okay. but in this case, uh, that video was about the octopus fleeing the aquarium, and in the other one was the medusas clogging the the, <laughs> the water intake that keeps the reactors yeah, gotcha. going nice and cool. <laughs> gotcha. A little problem so here and there. So those are they're important then. You're saying that 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 functionality is important. Yeah, I, I heard. That <laughs> cool, I heard that keeping a nuclear reactor cool is cool. good. It's okay. Cool. Okay. It's cool to keep it cool. All right. All right. I'm gonna go with that. With the the way that the temperatures can get sometimes these days, I, I wish I had my own nuclear reactor. I could just strap up to my house AC unit and just go for it and just forget everybody else. But yeah, yeah. Well, the you. nuclear reactor is hot. What you need is the water to cool it. Yeah, yeah. But it, it would. That's but why it, manatees. That's why manatees like to be near nuclear reactors. Yeah. What people need to remember is that um, things that humans have created, like a nuclear reactor, um, when they're in colder in when they're in the near the ocean, they use the water to cycle and cool it down. And actually yeah. manatees and other species really truly enjoy it. And it's a mm -hmm. very clean energy. You just have to be careful, of course, if there's a monsoon. So we don't have the Fukushima events of 2011, but that was a human error, not necessarily a nuclear reactor error. It was just a problem where they installed pumps and very complicated things with walls. But anyway, um, nuclear reactors do have a very interesting effect on, on wildlife and how they keep the manatees nice and warm during the winter time. Yeah, because it pumps the water in, and then the water goes over the rods, and then that are encased, obviously, so there's no contact between the water and the actual nuclear material, and then it gets yeah. kicked out, and then that outflow ends up so warm that, yeah, the animals are attracted to it. Yeah, you'll be amazed how many animals you see in Florida during the winter time, especially manatees. If you want to see manatees, uh, they're nuclear reactors in Apollo Beach near Tampa, and mm -hmm. uh, you, there is a beautiful park right there where they show you the the animal. They tell you the story and, and how it's actually very well done. So, guys, if you ever want to go see real life mermaids, that's where you. No, just <laughs> so there's yeah. actually two. There's actually two competing theories. So most people have heard the theory on this show or, or somewhere else before that manatees are the origin of the mermaid myth and. Christopher Columbus saw manatees. We've talked about that in the past before. And he commented how ugly they were <laughs> when it was actually <laughs> yeah. seaweed, not an ugly uh, um, mermaid. But one of the other competing theories, and I don't have the photo, but we'll post it. Actually, guys, this is a good segue to on our social media stuff, guys, we're going to start posting the things that we talk about in the show that we can't show you here. Because we think of things off the top of our head, and I don't have everything ready. We've got the videos ready to show, and sometimes I can pull up a photo. But we're going to start posting the, uh, the the random questions that we like to ask. I love asking Maria just random would you rathers or what if this or hypothetical questions. Photos we talk about, things like that. We're going to just post it all over the place in our social media stuff. So Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, even over at Patreon, we're going to have a free section for all the stuff. You guys don't have to subscribe. It'll just be over there so we can start to build a community because I think that's the part that Marie and I enjoy the most is we're looking forward to that. Yep. Um, but there's a photo actually of a beluga whale. And when beluga whales bend their tails because of their bone structure of the back half of their body, it actually looks like knees. And yes. So people actually think that the mermaid myth came from beluga whales, not from have mermaids. you actually seen it have you actually seen them actually, yeah i just wish i had it handy so again we're going to post that photo in all the places i just mentioned because i actually yeah. recorded them not in the ocean i wish i was that fancy but when i went to the if you ever go to atlanta definitely go to the aquarium it has mm -hmm. like three or four um shark whale whale sharks which is the okay. largest fish in the world they have like three or four and they also have a beluga um encounter and you can really see them from the tank you can see it like two floors down all the way up so you can actually see and they looks like knees it is uh -huh. extremely fascinating yeah fascinating so i'll uh, find a photo or i think i recorded a video of that so i'll find it so mermaids being one mythical creature i won't call them mythical we won't get into the the 
different aspects of it, but witches by some people are thought to be mythical. And witches tend to have a familiar animal, which is normally what, Maria? A kitten. A, kitten, a black kitten cat. or a raven. Oh, or ravens. Okay. And I always wondered to myself, do they just hang out with the witches? Or do like, you know, you watch Sabrina the Teenage Witch, like did that cat have powers or could it just talk? Like, was it a companion or did it have its own like powers? I was just watching a movie about that and they were talking about their companion animal that was actually part of their soul. It was called the Golden Com Com Compass and they all- Yeah, uh-huh. It's a book series, right? Yeah, it's a book series. Well, in the movie, I haven't read the actual book. Uh, is it in the, the Lion, movie, Witch, and the Wardrobe series? I'm not sure where the Golden no, Compass- I have no idea. This is the Golden Compass. Guys, fill us in in the comments below. Let us know. Golden Compass. What's Bond the book and Vespa from 007. Uh, <laughs> and of course, Nicole Kidman. Anyway, I uh, so it was a good movie. I mean, I okay. they left me on uh, now what? But um, they have their spirit animals, and um, I was like, oh, somebody had a, a black uh, leopard um, panther, and I'm like, I want that kitty. Mm -hmm. Ooh, so cute. He was not <laughs> on the good team, but the animal was gorgeous. So that was my side. Oh, yeah, I, will think, uh, I will think if I were a witch, I want my cat my or my critters to talk. I want to be connected with them. I mean, witches are supposed to be connected to nature. Therefore, mm. they should be able to communicate with the animals. But so that was always one. So they can communicate with the animals. But like I said, I always wondered if they passed on like the powers or abilities. So if they do, if that is an option, I think that this next guy might be a witch's familiar because Ooh. this is very impressive from a very, <laughs> very, very far distance. This is how you take out a human being if you're a cat <laughs> with witch powers. This is how it's done. <laughs> I, I'm you intrigued. If you want to know, here you go. This is how it's done. I'm hanging out. I'm hanging out. Boom. You're done. <laughs> <laughs> I got to give it hearts up. I, I, this is too adorable. <laughs> <laughs> one, one more time. One more time. Hold on. And the moment's coming. Boom. Wait, hold on. Oh, oh, oh ow, ow. And he just watches. He's just, he's just enjoying the view. <laughs> I love that cat. Oh, <laughs> it's a calico, right? Looks like a calico. Usually, it could be a female. Usually, a calico is um, thought to be a female genetically. I mean, there are some boys that could be calicos, but most likely girls. Oh man! How adorable! So, so that was too adorable. Sometimes <laughs> they like to take you out out of out of revenge, out of viciousness. <laughs> but then, guys, sometimes your pets they just love you too much, and when they love you too much. Sometimes they get a little excited, and oh God. then sometimes, sometimes things happen, especially if you're not paying attention to them. Oh, that girl. I'm looking at she like even lifts her, her leg ready to, uh, to uh, oh. hold the animal. I just loved it. He's like, all right, mom's home, or mom's leaving. Are we going somewhere together? Okay, hold on. Let me... But Let me get up to eye level. Look at that. Level. Listen. Listen. <laughs> it's her fault. It's her fault. I think when she called him, I think she was kind of saying, like, come down the stairs. Let's go out the door. I don't think she was saying, come tackle me from the stairs. <laughs> Break my head. That's hilarious. <laughs> Those are very smart dogs, by the way. They're used as police dogs, too, because they're extremely agile, extremely smart, mm -hmm. and um, really a perfect dog, if you think about it. I love German checkers. Guys, I'll probably mention this in the show many, many times in the future, but I used to work with canines uh, with the police department. Um, I loved the canines. I loved the dogs and working with them. Um, they, they, are, they are just so smart. And the cool thing is that now they're starting to... Um, bring in so many other different types of dogs uh, for canines because beagles have just a better sense of smell than most other dogs. And they actually started getting very like, so what happens with is all the canines are kind of trained in one location. They used to be, I think it was Dutch, I think Netherlands, 
is where they originally came from when they just started canine programs in like the 70s and 80s. Um, but they train them all in one place. And then they started to realize that different dogs had different abilities. So now they have like certain dogs are like bomb sniffing dogs and certain dogs like canines are more of your police partner dogs and stuff. Um, anybody that has uh, fun stories about like different ways they've seen different breeds of dogs used Maria. Okay. Everybody <laughs> else in the comments, unfortunately, Maria is the only one on the cast until we get a live stream going. I'm going to take so, advantage of this situation. <laughs> so the one kid in the class that raised its hand to answer the question, I guess I have to call on them. Uh, okay. Maria, what do you got? So, um, a couple of um, months ago, I went to a, uh, in Medellin, Colombia, there is a place called Hunin, and Hunin is a lot of stores downtown, and it's just packed with people, there are vendors everywhere, it is a fascinating plethora of humanity just mingling, so we go to this uh, store, and I wanted to buy a silver necklace, so we go to this silver making store, and I see this gentleman uh, with his uniform that says security and a really fat dog that was literally upside down being petted by one of the by, by one of the people who worked at the store. Okay. Not thinking much of it. Of course, I go and approach and I'm petting the dog and I'm in absolute heaven petting this dog. And I'm thinking, wow, this is the weirdest security dog in the planet. I don't know how <laughs> this youngster can actually Emotional catch support them. security animal. <laughs> basically not only that but she was like old you can tell her belly was uh dark black which means she had a little bit of uh thyroid issues maybe that mm -hmm. i don't know i mean this dog was like a chaotic mess one leg maybe closer to the other side touching the okay. rainbow bridge but anyway so i'm like oh petting the dog and she's just so happy and i'm so happy so finally the the couple leave and uh so i asked the lady who i wanted to buy the jewelry from like oh my gosh what does that dog do? And she's like, she's one of the best bomb sniffing dogs ah. that the city has. And I was like, plunk. <laughs> Couldn't believe it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, wow, bomb sniffing dog. That was awesome. You, just, you wouldn't expect it. I mean, it was like, the I think it was our animal abilities uh, podcast that we did a little while back, but we were talking about bees being used for bomb sniffing in, in uh, airports, which... Mm -hmm. Maria and I had a nice discussion about how, how would that go? Because if there's a bee flying around me, I don't know how long it's going to survive. So I, I don't know about the training aspect and the utility. We I think we we finally ended up with they probably like are they let them around the bags and stuff on the other side, like once the bags have been checked in. Yeah, but yeah, yeah there's, just, there's so many animals that can provide so many functions for security and law enforcement that first we, we think of canines and then they branched out into different types of dogs for different abilities. But then, yeah, they've got, I've seen uh, police rabbits. I'm not exactly sure what, <laughs> what their main function was. I don't know. They were like, really, sometimes you bring them on for kids programs and outreach stuff. And this is just me, nothing to do with, with, I mean, I was like 19 when I was working, I was only working with the canines. I didn't work for the police department. Um, but I've seen rabbits, I've, I've seen lizards, I've seen so many different um, animals that you know, security forces or police departments or militaries and stuff are using. Um, I mean, they've got like the mines, the mine sniffing uh, rats that they put out in minefields. Yes. Because they don't weigh enough to set off the mines. So they're able to find them and detect them without endangering people or themselves. Um, there's Isn't just- Isn't that yeah. amazing? Mm -hmm. how they use them and also they are um helping in in the african countries in some of the nations they're not only training the rats to detect bombs but also to help them with different health issues like they're uh -huh. literally training them to sniff out different uh, diseases it's, it is absolutely fascinating and even dogs are trained to sniff cancer and things like that mm -hmm. I, mean, I think they the, really I, I like the evolution because rats historically got such a bad rap for the black plague and being spreaders of, of disease and stuff like that. Um, I don't know if you guys have saw it. It's going to bring the mood down just a little bit, but I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, you guys have seen the photo and we'll find the photo and post this again in, in the social media platforms and stuff. Cause I don't, I didn't think about it. It's so, so obvious, but I didn't think about it. until I saw this photo and somebody wrote, it's unfortunately a mouse that's caught in a mouse trap. 
and it's have you seen this Maria on Facebook? And it's literally a little story told from the perspective of the mouse. Oh yes, I oh it's oh, so painful. It's so sad, but you don't realize that you can just take that animal and put it outside. There's humane traps that you can use and then just take them and put them outside. If you think they're gonna get back into your house, drive a few blocks down, go to a park, let them out. Because if you read, it's heartbreaking, this story that basically this mouse tells after it's already trapped in the trap. And I'll let you guys read it. I don't wanna to totally bring the move down, but No, please, but it is beautiful perspective. You, and you perspective. don't, Exactly. And you don't think about, he's just talking about the pain and, and loss of feeling and fading and stuff. Just, it sounds like something a human would write if they're trapped under a building or something like that. And it humanized it so much for me that, but really just, they are not disease carriers. The, you take these animals, like I said, like Maria said, in Africa and stuff, they, they, they're trained to sniff out disease and help human beings. So they get this bad rap from the Black Plague. But as much as you can. And Maria is, Maria, what do you do when there's ants in the house? Well, so when there are ants in the house. This is Maria's <laughs> version. <laughs> my, my version is actually tap the, the ground where they are at. Uh, there used to be a window where I, there was a house I used to live that there was a window right next to the uh, stove. And a lot of ants will get in because it was very easy access. And I will start tapping the counter. Just start tapping the counter. And it's like they already knew okay we better you know better take cover so you just tap the counter very gently uh and then you start adding a little bit of water not on them because if you add water to them they're not going to be able to move they'll suffocate and they will literally drown even though you think it's a small drop for them it's a humongous drop so i will start once they were out i will start putting water like as a barrier so they knew and and then i will use different scents there are actually a lot of uh, natural ways to deter the animals, including rats. And uh, so I would use the cloves, or if you have a rat, then you use peppermint. For cockroaches, the same thing. Now, the problem is with cockroaches, I have a problem. I try really hard to get them out, but I know some of them fly, and that just freaks me out. So today, there was actually a little one that was from the family of a cockroach, but it wasn't a cockroach, okay. but it looked just the same. And I'm okay. like, okay, I need to be brave because if I'm going to let a mouse out, I need to be very conscious of the fact that because I think they're ugly, doesn't mean they deserve to die. So I put a cup and, and a really stiff piece of paper. Mm -hmm. I just took it outside and, and let it out. So I know it sounds weird, but... As you guys watch the podcast as we as we move forward, um, Maria and I are both very big animal people. Um, Maria definitely is, I don't wanna say I'm not caring, obviously that's a bad way to put it, but I'm a dog person and I like animals in general, but when it comes to stuff like this, we all have our own levels and limits. I, I'm killing a mosquito, I'm sorry, a mosquito's dying. Like I, I don't, I don't want to fight me. I don't want the irritation of it. Uh, I'm not as kind to ants as Maria is. I will take a mouse outside. I will try to catch a flying animal in the cups of my hand if I can and take it outside. If it's not a mosquito. Um, <laughs> Let's so, be specific about that. <laughs> so again, guys, if, we're not going to judge anybody here. Everybody's got their own approaches and, and Everyone's heart is equally as big, but we all have levels. Like we're human beings and we exist in the world. So um, if you have a quirk or something that you do with animals, Maria likes to tap the ground to get rid of ants. I've never seen or even heard of that until I met Maria. Um, <laughs> they will go. They will. They're so cool. They're actually it, pretty smart. And then you become kind of friends with them. And when they say, I know it sounds nuts, but you kind of become friends. And when they see you, they're actually faster at leaving once uh -huh. they feel the tap. This is incredible to notice after a few months. I was like, and they will psh, all fly. And like, it's all perfectly sane and caring and, until that moment where where you come out and Maria's actually named all of them. And then she's individually <laughs> asking them to leave by name. Like, Tony, I know you're the leader of this one, but you really need to like, move it on. Because <laughs> Selena's following you and she's not going to go anywhere, Tony, unless you get... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Okay, Ryan. Now you're like the sheep from that first video you showed. <laughs> that is awesome. All right, guys. I hope you guys had fun. Uh, I know we did. We always have just a ton of fun uh, hanging out and doing 
this. And uh, we're really looking forward to uh, our live streams and being able to chat with you guys and have a bigger conversation and a group. Um, we're hoping to get those started. We're not sure when. We're gonna we're gonna get those going soon though. Um, but if you guys can do us a favor, please uh, click the subscribe button if you're catching us on YouTube, if you're catching the podcast in audio form, whether it be Google, Spotify, um, Apple Podcasts, wherever it might be, you guys follow us. Uh, please leave us comments. We we love to read them. We that's the interaction that we get for now as we're building up. Um, and again, like I said, we're going to start building a community. So we're going to be posting the photos that we talked about. So the mouse photo, the beluga photo in this case, some of the funny question polls. So you guys can chime in and, and maybe what do you think happened that that irked the octopus to squirt the girl? Or maybe he was doing it out of kindness. But we <laughs> love to hear your stories and your perspectives of, of maybe what you do with animals in your house. Um, that's kind of our goal here. We enjoy talking about animals and we have fun with it, but we really want to build a community and get interaction and share photos and ideas and just, just really get everybody together and have fun. So catch us over on Facebook, Twitter, uh, YouTube. Again, we're going to be posting on Patreon, but there's a, it's a, there's a free section. So when you go to wild chats on Patreon, you can see all the posts and polls and all that stuff's free. You don't have to sign up or pay anything or do any of that but that's just kind of we want to build the community in every corner that we can so maria thank you very much for coming on I'm not coming on you're, you're you're on it with me for showing your stories that's hello <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you ryan for coming into the show yeah. i really appreciate you yeah, thank you ryan <laughs> myself for running the circus and uh <laughs> They're saying, uh, not my circus, not not my circus, not my monkeys. Like oh, that. I don't know. Yeah, not not my something, not my problem. So I guess that's a circus version of not my circus. Not, not my, my circus, monkey. not my monk, whatever. Anyway, somebody please write it properly. Thank you. Yeah, if you guys have ever been around monkeys, you can see how terrible. Like we've both been bitten by monkeys. That is one of our, our animal stories we have in common, Maria and I. Mine didn't break the skin, fortunately, so I didn't have to go eat rabies shots, guys. If you're ever bitten by a monkey and it breaks the skin. You do, do need to go get rabies shots. That is, uh, if you I get, think I had to have a rabies shot. I actually had blood on my fingers. Yeah. What is it? If you it get it, pretty bad. If you get a preventative rabies shot, then it's a three shot series. But if you get bit, then you only need one. Is that the way it goes? I don't remember. I got a rabies shot for prevent. Did I get a rabies shot when I went to the Amazon? Was it the rabies? No, it was malaria. Never mind. Yeah, malaria and some sort of something. Rabies. But yeah, if, I if, carry my my vaccination for malaria. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, if you're gonna ask me for one thing, I'm showing you the other. Yeah, You're like, no, no, I've got good records. Don't worry, it's on there somewhere. Don't worry, just let me in. Just let me in. I got pictures <laughs> of it. <laughs> yeah, yellow fever is a big one, depending on what what parts of the country. Yellow you're fever. In. That's what I had. Yellow fever. If you ever get bit by a monkey, uh, that is uh, rabies territory. So that's that's my uh, my yeah. PSA public service announcement. Not yellow fever territory. That's mosquito territory. <laughs> That's a whole nother fun disease. Isn't that mosquito based? I know malaria is. See, which promotes my, I'm sorry, but I kill mosquitoes. Um, Chikungunya, <laughs> Sika, mosquito, malaria. I mean, most of the nasty diseases are spread by vectors and vectors like yep. mosquitoes. Deadliest animal on the planet. You would never guess it, but it is. I know. All right, guys. Thank you so much for chiming in. We enjoyed having you. I'm sure you, well, I'm sure you enjoyed the show if you got this far. And uh, we will see you guys next time. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.